this video is going to focus on simplifying numerical expressions. Let's try to figure out what these words mean before we do anything. To simplify means to perform as many operations as possible. In this case, for today's presentation, it means work it down to one number. Numerical means that there's numbers involved. There's not going to be any variables or anything like that. Expressions are numbers, symbols, and operations grouped together to represent a value. Basically, numbers and operations for what we're doing today. But let's just talk about the three types of math statements that there are. We've got expressions, equations, and inequalities. Expressions are numbers, variables, and operations. If you have 5 times 2, that's an expression. There's no variables in that, but it's still an expression. 4a plus 9 would be an expression. 2 fifths minus 9, that's also an expression. Equations are numbers, variables, and operations stating equality to another expression. So that basically means anything with an equal sign is an equation. 5 times 2 equals 10. 4a plus 9 equals 5b minus 4. You've got expressions on both sides of the equal sign. 6n equals 2 fifths minus 9. Those are all equations. Inequalities, they're going to state that two expressions are not equal. So basically, it's things involving inequality signs. 5 times 2 is greater than 3. 4a plus 9 is less than 28. Or 6n is not equal to 2 fifths minus 9. Those are all inequalities. Most of you are used to seeing the greater than, less than signs, but this is also an inequality. We're going to focus today on expressions and only with numbers, only with integers. Over here on the left, I have this P-E-M-D-A-S. Hopefully you realize that that stands for parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. This is a checklist of things you want to look for as you're working out a problem. So this first one here, this first expression, is going to be 5 plus 3 times 4. If you want, you could pause this, work it out, see what you come up with, and see what I get. A lot of kids will say this one is going to be 32 because they want to add the 5 and 3 first. But when you go through the order of operations, it's not going to be 32. First, you look for parentheses. There are no parentheses. Then you look for exponents. There are no exponents. We look at the multiply dividing. We do have some multiplying. You have this positive 3 times 4. The 5 is going to drop down. You're going to do the 3 times 4, and you end up with a positive 12. So 5 plus 12 is your next line. And then you have your add subtract. So you're going to add those two numbers, and you get 17. If you need to see that process again, stop, rewind, check it out. This next one, we have 9 plus 6 divided by 3. A lot of kids will say this answer works out to 5 because they think you need to add the 9 and 6, but not in this case. You, ha you look for parentheses, none. No exponents. We have multiply, divide. They come through the door at the same time, multiply and divide. They share equal importance. You'll see why in a little bit. But we're going to look for the division, and we do have some division. The 9 drops down. A positive 6 divided by a positive 3 is going to be a positive 2. So you could also think of it as 9 plus 2. And that works out to 11. The next one. We've got 6 minus 8 times 2. So you look for parentheses, none. Any exponents, none. Multiply, divide. You do have some multiplying. The 6 is going to drop down, and then you do negative 8 times 2, which is a negative 16. So you could rewrite this as 6 minus 16. Then you have some adding and subtracting. Be real careful. A lot of kids forget to remember their integer rules. A lot of kids will write down positive 10, but there's definitely more negatives in this problem. So it's going to be a negative 10. So this next one, we're going to look for parentheses, none. No exponents. Multiply, divide. I see some multiplying. I see some division. Now, the reason why I have the MD together, like in the same level, you look for both of them. And if you see both of them, you do the one that's on the left. So you're going to do the 20 divided by 5. The times 2 just drops down to the next level. So you have this, and that works out to 8. Because you have more multiplying, you have 8. 
20 times 5 divided by 2. Looks a lot like the other problem. We've just switched around some signs, some operations. No parentheses, no exponents. We do have multiplying and dividing. You do the one that's on the left. So in this case, you're going to get 100 divided by 2, which is, you have your division still. It's going to be 50. So parentheses. Now we do have parentheses here. We have this negative 5 in parentheses, but there's nothing going on in the parentheses. It's just a number hanging out. So we move on. No exponents. We do have some multiplying. We actually have two multiplication problems, and they're far enough apart to where you can take care of them both in the same step. You have this 7 times 2, and then you have this negative 4 times negative 5. A number right up against parentheses means you're multiplying. So the 7 times 2 is going to be 14. Negative 4 times negative 5 is going to be a positive 20. And then you do your adding, and you get 34. So we have parentheses for this one. So we take care of that. Now we look for exponents. There are no exponents. We have multiply, divide. We have them both. We do the one that's on the left, 48 divided by 2. And then that's going to work out to 24 because you're going to do the division. Uh-oh. Lots of stuff going on in this problem. I see this in big brackets, so we're going to tune into this. Also, I've got these other symbols here. These, if you don't remember, these are absolute value bars. These can also be considered grouping symbols. So when we're looking for parentheses, we can actually take care of both of these at the same time. If you tune into each of them, you're going to see that you're going to do the parentheses within over here, and you're going to do the multiplying over here. You can take care of them both in the same step. So we work that out. Now the next line says exponent. So I've got an exponent right here. Now this isn't an exponent, but while we're working this out, since it's far enough away from this other grouping symbol, we can take care of it. So 3 to the third, don't say that it's 9. It's definitely going to be 27. And this drops down. Notice how we haven't done anything with the divided by 9 yet. That's going to be this next step. We've got some multiply divide. I'm going to take care of that while I'm also taking care of this 2. Minus the absolute value of 2. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. We have the 3 minus 2, and that would be our add subtract level. That's going to work out to 1. So this whole thing simplified to 1. There's a lot of other variations of the same concept. You just keep on showing your steps, writing everything out, follow your checklist of uh, the PEMDAS, and uh, that should help you out. So best of luck to you.